Hello, OpAmp here, and what I have for you today is this multi-lock classic padlock, um, graciously lent to me by a friend. This has been used, you can see some. there's some wear on it. Um, not exactly sure of its when it was manufactured, but you can see the code here, 0798. I uh, was not really able to find information about that, perhaps it's... July of 1998. Uh, you can see your key here and multi-lock in Hebrew on the key. Uh, multi-lock uh, is originally a uh, Israeli company um, and this lock has a uh, spring-loaded shutter to protect the lock. Works very very smoothly you can see the locking mechanism right there and goes back together very nicely uh, so I'm going to try and pick this for you today um, I'm going to use a vise because this is a pretty heavy hefty lock and uh, it's not so comfortable to hold in the hand See if I can get a little bit of a better view for you here. And I'm going to be using a little Z-bar for tension and a small flag. So let's see what I can do for you. I'm going to pick the outer pins first. Uh, generally, works that works for multi-locks, outer pins and inner pins. Uh, this is a pin and pin design. So I'm feeling here, nothing on one, nothing on two. A little click on three, nothing on four. Strong binding on five, a couple clicks, three clicks, and a little bit of rotation. Uh, that guy might be set. I'll come back up here through the lock, and nothing on four. A little click out of two. A little click out of one. I'm just going to sort of go back and forth. Um, did pick this a couple times before in the lock. I'm guessing just from use before. Uh, that was two. Got some significant rotation there. I think probably just from use before. Um, it just has a lot of kind of gunk and dirt in it. Um, and it's feeling the pin set is not very crisp. Uh, not such great feedback here. Okay, so that was one and I got some rotation. Coming back to pin two, that feels pretty set. Three is pretty loose. Four, nothing. Five, nothing. Now I'm just coming through. A little more tension here. A little click out of four. Still working on those outer pins. Three feels pretty set, two feel set, and one. What I don't want to do is overset these pins, because um, that's just going to not be a good time. Uh, some cases you can let off a little bit of tension, and that will help. Some cases you better off starting over, they just won't drop. Hit pin four there, just nudged it a little bit, and got a little bit of core rotation. Uh, so I think we're heading in the right direction here. Some people will, will try to pick each pin and feel through the serrations, and then when it, they get that sort of different feeling of the pin setting. Um, this guy... Um, I think because, like I said, he was used and he's a little dirty. Um, just not giving me great feedback. Been a lot of clicks and a lot of feelings of clicks. Um, but figuring out the significance of that is not always so easy. Binding on pin four, five, 
try to just be methodical about this. Feel each one. Got a little bit of rotation there. I think that was pin three. And I heard some something click, so something fell down. Pin one, got some binding and a little click and some great rotation there. This is pin two. Felt a little something. I'm gonna let off because I think I may have slightly overset pin one. Didn't hear anything drop. I'm gonna keep going with it. We'll see what happens. Nothing on five, nothing on four, three, and we got some significant core rotation. Um, so I would venture to guess that we've got our outer pin set. And now I'm gonna feel around, see about those inners. And whew, bit of a marathon, but we are open right there. So I'm going to let this guy lock back up and take him out of the vise and we'll do a little bit of gutting. Now on these classics, let me see if I can move out a little bit for you. Um, this guy is actually going to need a Allen key and I'm just going to put a little piece of this drawer liner right in front um, here because you'll see when I when I take out that that core um, there's really nothing holding it together and if those pins go springing uh, that's it you're you're sunk um, so what happens is the shack when the shackle is in there it, it prevents this from uh, coming apart and I'll show you how that works in a minute uh, so we take out this set screw right here and that was actually fairly easy uh, a little bit of Loctite it looks like on there and you'll see that the whole body right here slides apart and I'm just going to hold this here because you'll see what's going to happen in a minute so that shackle would have prevented everything and you can see I already Got a spring popping out, and that was from the. Um, get some tweezers in here. That was from the shutter mechanism. So I'm gonna put this guy right up here, and try to get you a little better view of what's about to happen. This is the um, little top plate. And this is the mechanism. You can see that's also sprung. I'm going to get that out gently. And then we have our core. Now the thing about this core, if you look at it, is there's really no, uh, I guess you would say, body around it. There's a Bible and the cylinder, but there's nothing connecting them really. Um, so this is not necessarily going to be the prettiest gut, but I will attempt to do it uh, as best as I can. So I'm going to slide that out while holding these two together. Okay, set that aside. Uh, the only way to really do this is let all the drivers come out. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And you can see all of our drivers right there. Uh, all of our springs. We'll leave that for a minute and uh, pop this core right over there and uh, you'll see this they're all serrated. I'll try to get a good picture of that for you. Right there they all look the same serrated sprung in the middle. Um, so I'm just gonna put this together how it would be in the lock. right there and then we'll start to get your pins out um, I'm gonna try to dump them I guess on the top and then you can see this are these are really uh, kind of gooped up here uh, like I said this is 
a lock that was used and it, it shows it's uh, getting some dirt on here just from grease and grime just from disassembling this. Maybe I'll go with these guys. Might be a little bit better. Um, here is uh, number two. And I uh, feel like I'm doing a little multi-lock surgery. Get that inner pin out of there. And there's your next key pin. And number three. And number four. I'm just going to get number five out here while I'm bashing on it, and then we'll deal with that. And, uh, whoops, so that's number five. And uh, he's actually kind of this uh, mushroom looking guy. So that's kind of interesting. And let me see if I can get that get these apart for you. So this is actually number five right here. And this guy is number four. Right there. Uh, I expect all the springs to be standard, but we'll take a look anyway. Yeah, all those springs are the same. Uh, I can see nothing really fancy over here. Uh, nothing fancy over here. Here is your bidding. And um, that's all I've got for now. Uh, reassembly of this is a little tricky. Uh, Got to take like a shim, push it up, push everything together. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera because uh, it might not be pretty. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, view of this uh, multi-lock uh, classic padlock with uh, serrated drivers. And um, this has been Op Amp. Thank you for watching.